So we're talking about stem and leaf. Which country, which country has a lot of those types of leaves? And I'll give you a hint. It is where the Math Jedi originates from. Okay, so once you've figured out that little puzzle, let's go and check out stem and leaf plots and how to go and display some data. Here we go. Today we are looking at stem and leaf. So stems and leaf plots. Seems always weird whenever I do this lesson. So stem and leaf, uh, we're basically looking at data displays. This is a way to display data. And somebody we haven't seen seen for a very long time. Uh, well, let's let's get her in here. Uh, let's get MathCat. MathCat's going to help us out a little bit. So here's MathCat, a very rough sketch of MathCat. And uh, MathCat, of course, is kind of like a black and white cat uh, and stuff. So as I try and do my black and white cat, it's got a big, big, big eyeball. And, and she has little long eyelashes and that sort of thing. She's a cute little cat sometimes, if you like cats. I'm never really a big cat fan, honestly. Um, but sometimes it's okay. So there we go. Sometimes cats are all right. And the cat has a little like ding ding little nose, and of course a little red mouth that it's very excited about, like eating mag little mouses. And it's got a little like woo little tongue meow meow, um, and that kind of stuff. And what else does Math Cat have? Math Cat has maybe a little. Little little hand and a little body with a little foot and another one something like this. Never very good at drawing this one. Oh, a little bit of a different, a uh, little bit of a different size for the arm. Maybe it's got a little black tail part there and. Maybe on the body, it's got a little black and white stripes kind of stuff going on there. And there you go. So you got Math Cat. Math Cat looks a little bit scary today. Math Cat's going to help us though. There we go. So stem and leaf. Uh, what do you actually have to know besides how to draw a cat? Uh, what do you need to know? You need to know uh, that there are stems and there are leaves. <laughs> yeah. Let me just, you know what? The best way to do this lesson is just to show you examples. Okay. Uh, so here we go. Uh, what kind of things do you want to look at? Um, let's take a look at um, what's a good topic. So there's my stem and here's my leaf. What would be a good topic of things? Um, let's see. Actually, why don't I do a two, three? Let's cover zero. Zero, one, two, three. And I'll just say uh, the topic today is how many uh, what has the cat done? How many uh, how many mice have been eaten? Not eaten. How about mice that have been captured and released? Right? Okay, so captured and released. That's what we're looking at today. Because this is a peaceful math cat. So mice that have been captured and then released into the wild so they can live a happy life and live happily ever after. So how many mice were captured perhaps like each month, let's say. And let's go and add some stuff. So you can see what I've just created here. So a stem and a leaf. And this is going to make sense in a second. So <clears throat> again, you want to keep things in order. So uh, you want to definitely be doing stuff like five, Five, nine, and then what's that give me? Um, see, this is for the whole year, right? So there's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, four, nine, ten, eleven, and then we'll say this is eight. Okay, cool. So <clears throat> I've, I've cut up my my data into stems and leaves. The most important thing you got to remember here is that you need to have something called a key. So you need a key, and this is going to tell you how to read how to read the stem and leaf plot. And my key is going to just basically say this. So it's going to say uh, one, and I'll put a little um, slash there. I kind of make this like really colorful so you guys can see this. 
So 1 slash 3, uh, what would happen here? This would equal, this would mean 13. So that means this, the, the red stuff, these are your stems. So you can tell that the stems are kind of like base 10 numbers. And the leaves are like single digit numbers there. So like 13 like that. So put them together. So imagine you had, let's just go here. You had two and you wanted to say um, all of these ones. So these are all individual numbers. So these numbers would then represent using this key, the number 20, 23, 25, 25, and 29. Okay, so that's how you would read that. Um, maybe over here, I can write them down, but over here, this would just be, so zero for the ten. So this would be three, four, four, and five. Um, over here, this would be 38. And over here, this would be 11 and 19. So that's how you would go and read the stem and leaf plot. It allows you to summarize data, perhaps a little bit more succinctly. You could also go and it helps you to easily maybe sometimes see that the majority of your data is in the 20s. So you could say that in the majority of the months, MathCat captured in the 20s, like around 20 or so mice. If you start looking at generalizations, there's more numbers in the 20s. Uh, there were very few in the 30s, so you can start to see things very clearly, easily, by kind of arranging your, your data that way. Um, there are other more complicated stem and leaf plots. There's double ones. Double ones are always pretty cool. I always find them pretty neat. So this is even a, a more interesting way. So let's say uh, MathCat was looking at, I don't know, um, how many friends MathCat has and how many enemies friends and enemies. So, then you can probably see like, oh, so you can do this. This is pretty neat. So I'm going to put my stem in the middle and then I'm going to put down, maybe these are, these are enemies by month and friends by month, let's say. Okay. And you should keep things in order. So I'm going to kind of keep things in order like this. And maybe there's a lot of twos here and five, 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 seven, nine maybe eight, a couple of eights and a nine, maybe zero, seven and a two. Um, and then on the other side, um, let's say the friends, let's say um, it goes like this, and then it goes like, I don't know, three, and then seven and an eight and a nine. And then over here, woof, fours, five, seven, eights, nines. And, um, here we go, so maybe like a nine, eight, Seven, something, something like that. Okay, so you're reading this both ways. So this allows you to kind of go like, oh, so how many enemies does MathCat have on a given month or something like that? So you say seven, nine, and nine. This would be, oh, oh, I forgot. You're right. I heard you saying this. Come on, what's the key? You need the key. So the key would be like this. So this would equal seventeen. Very, very cool. Um, like that. So you could do this, uh, and then. You can say, okay, so now I know that this means 10, 11, 12. Um, over here means 22, 22, 25, 25, 25, 27, 29. Over here is 40, 47, 42. Over here would be 49, 48, and 47. So you can see a double stem and leaf plot. Again, it allows you to summarize your data quite quickly, uh, which is always interesting. And the last thing I want to show you, just for another little uh, example, is sometimes when you have uh, a stem and leaf, and I'll just do a regular stem and leaf. Um, so here's my stem, and here's my leaf. Sometimes um, students get a little bit like, what are you talking about? Can you have two digits um, for your stem and leaf? Sure, you could. You could, definitely. And it all depends, again, on what your key is saying, what it means. So that is important. So uh, there we go. So the key for this one, so the key <clears throat> would say this, uh, 10 slash 3, this would equal 103. So that's what it would equal. So if I asked you, what does this data point mean? That would mean whoop, 
148. So you can also have stem and leaves um, kind of be um, writing that way as well. So there you go, a quick little introduction into using stem and leaf plots with a guest appearance of MathCat. Thanks all you math padawans. Hopefully you enjoyed this on stem and leaf. Go check out some of my other videos. If you haven't, go down and subscribe and check out my country of origin, Canada, and go get some maple syrup. They taste great on pancakes. Until next time, have a great day.